Okay, so we're now within our Civil 3D. Um, looking at our ribbons, we're going to go to the Analyze tab, and we're going to come down and we're going to hit the Launch Express button. So we're going to launch Hydroflow Express. Okay, so it quickly opens up to software and uh, user-friendly, really visual, uh, a lot of different things you can do. You can get some results. You can do some pretty good uh, quick and easy reports. So um, across the top here, and we're going to look at each one of these individually, but we have culverts, we have channels, different types of channels to use. We have inlets, um, different types of inlets that we're going to be using. Uh, hydrology, if you just wanted to do a quick uh, hydrograph and, and weir. So. Let's go left to right. Let's uh, go to culverts. Um, the good thing is about this that uh, it shows you here what you need to put in. So we need to put in invert elevation. We're going to select that. It also tells you down here what that is. Enter the downstream invert elevation. And kind of a third way, it just shows you over here exactly what it is. Um, so we're just going to pick some random numbers here. We're going to go invert elevation down. Let's just pick 100. A uh, length. Uh, we're going to go 37.23 feet uh, and a slope. We can either do a slope or we can put in our invert elevation up. Uh, so if we know both inverts and don't really care to calculate the slope, we can key that in. So we can go 102.3. It's going to calculate the slope for us. Or we can put in the slope here, uh, let's just say 1%, and it's going to calculate the invert for us. Uh, so either way there. Rise, that's just going to be the... Yeah, the inner diameter of your pipe. Uh, I'm just going to do 36 inch pipe. Different options for shape, circular, arch, box, or elliptical. Span, you know, if it's circular, a rise is the same thing as a span. It's going to automatically fill that in for us. Uh, if we have multiple barrels, we can take a look up to four. Um, an end value, you can choose different end values here if you wanted to. Um, inlet edge, different, different uh, options for inlet edges. And then the embankment. If you don't know what uh, the top elevation of that embankment is, it'll, it'll show you here. Um, just saying top elevation, your embankment. So we're just going to say, uh, we're going to go 104. Top width, uh, maybe we got a 36 foot width. Um, crest, uh, we're just going to pick a little bit bigger there, 40. Um, now here on the calcs. Uh, Qmin, Qmax, incremental, uh, and your tailwater options, or um, your head, your tailwater. You can, we can just leave that as a default for now. Um, on our Qmax, if we want to calculate just one individual rate, um, we can ju we'll just key in our Qmin. But if we want to see between a range of certain things, uh, and I'll show you, then then we'll want to put in both. So right now I'm going to put in my Q. For my min. So maybe I know there's uh, 27 CFS coming through here. And I'm just going to hit run. I didn't, that automatically populated that, so I'm just going to hit run. And that's not the best looking thing there, but you can see here on the inlet control uh, what it does. So I'm going to change my Q max to, you know, maybe a minimum of 35, maybe, or 27 a maximum of 47 with an increment value of 1. So I'm going to hit run again. And it's going to give me the values of each one of these as I go. So, so I can come down here and I can say, hey, if I have 30 CFS, what's the information there? So, uh, you know, you can quickly get in there and you can quickly just put in those numbers and kind of have an idea of what's going on in that culvert. Um, some of the reports, if we just hit print, it's going to give me a report. Um, I'm going to hit print, report. I'm just going to print this to a PDF real quick. Printing complete. I don't know where it went though. Oh, there it is. All right, let's go to my messy desktop here. So on all these reports, you can quickly get in there, run a calc, and have something printable. Um, and this display is all messed up, but uh, usually you'll see something different. That yellow won't be there. Uh, but you can quickly do a culvert report, include this in your um, design calcs and in your in, in any spreadsheets or something just as a, a quick exhibit. So um, 
So that's kind of the quick overview of the culvert. Now we, let's look at the channels one. If I go to channels, it's going to give me different options here. From left to right, I can just do a rectangular section. I have an option for a triangular section, trapezoidal, uh, gutter section. So if I want gutter spread, uh, it'll do that for me. Uh, pipe section, just kind of a circular pipe or uh, user defined. So this is cool. Not a lot of softwares in the past have had a user defined section where I can get in there and divide, define uh, a stream bed or something that's not a typical section. So uh, this is useful if you do things like that often. So uh, I'm just going to show you a quick calc on, actually let's go back to this. If you see something within your your data input that says dash zero dash, that means you don't have to use that value. Uh, you don't have to put a number in there because it's not going to take that into account in the, in the calculations right off the bat. So um, FYI on that. So on this gutter section, we can do section, um, you know, our SX. And again, it's showing us here our slopes and things like that. So SX is going to be our slope of our road. I'm going to say 0 0.02. SW, that's my gutter slope. Uh, whatever that is, 13, I think. A gutter width, 1.5. Invert elevation, that is, let's see, 0.5. Our slope, that's our, our roadway slope. So maybe it's going downstream at uh, 1%. Uh, I'm just going to go 1. N value, whatever concrete is. Uh, compute by, you can do a Q versus depth. You can do a known Q or a known depth. You know, if you have a known Q, you can just quickly come in here and you know there's three CFS at that inlet section. Uh, you want to see the spread or say three. I did that opposite, so we're just going to do, well, let's do one there. Hit run. So you can come in here and you can see uh, visually your gutter spread. Uh, it gives you all the information, the depth. 0.37, your Q value, area, velocity, uh, and things like that. So uh, kind of a quick check on a channel. Uh, some pretty, and again, go to print, report, and you can have a quick report there. So uh, it's just as easy to come in here and do five, hit run, and you can see my, my water rising there. So you can quickly come in here, change properties, and look at that. So, um, you know, that's just on a channel. If you want to do an inlet and you want to see bypass and you want to see spread, and you want to see different, a little more detail than just that channel uh, gutter section, we're going to go to the inlets. Um, and again, you can choose what type of inlet you're using, grain inlets, things like that. We're just going to use a standard curb. Um, and you can do it on grade or you can do it in a sag. I'm going to go on grade to show you the flow by. Uh, length, uh, three foot inlet works for me. That works also. And again, dash zero dash means you don't have to put anything in, so we're going to come all the way down to here. It's going to be a typical inlet information. Um, depressions, if you have any. We'll just pick a pretty number there. Slope, that'll be your roadway slope again. And value, and again, same same quant same calcs. Uh, here, so we're going to just put in five, hit run, and again, really visual, uh, really good to use this. Uh, come in here, you can zoom around, you can do anything you want. It's going to give you all that information you need um, as far as your gutter spread, velocities, things like that. So you can come in here and uh, either widen that, and maybe you want a double inlet, and we're just going to double that length, hit run, so you can see what's what's happening there. So uh, again, some useful information. Now I'm going to jump over to hydrology. Um, if we want to do just a quick calc on, on one on one basin, um, hydrology gives us three options: rational, modified rational, and the SCS method. You know, so if I come in and plug in some more information real quick, I'm, in, I'm just going to use SCS. No, I'm going to use rational. I changed my mind. Uh, area: we got a three-acre commercial site, all draining in. I just want to do a quick calc. Our runoff coefficient. 0.82, uh, user-defined time of concentration method, or your FAA TR55 or your curb pitch methods. I'm just going to go user-defined, and it's going to we're going to say it's an 11 minute distribution and duration. Don't need that right now. Uh, frequency, 
change of frequency, 25 year storm. Um, hit run, and it's going to give you all that information. So here's your time, here's your queue volume. Um, just that, it's more of a quick check, nothing I personally use. Um, but as a quick check of volumes, you can get in there and you can look at your peaks and uh, peak flow and, you know, retention needed, things like that. So um, on the weirs, you can take a look at weirs. And, and again, it's just plugging in information um, as long as your IDF curves are set up how you need them to. Um, Hydroflow Express is just kind of a quick way to get some, some useful information. And I think it's good for reporting. Um, I use it for culverts and inlets. I don't really use it for the and channels. I guess more of a culvert as well. So.